coming up on this week's edition of the Daily Racing Form Race Horse Digest. A complete recap of the 120th Kentucky Derby, including another look at Gopher Gin's upset victory. And we'll show you two of the other main events from Derby Weekend, the Kentucky Oaks featuring the West Coast stars Lakeway and Sardula. And the early times turf classic with the two-time Breeders' Cup champion, Lure. And hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln. Our Racehorse Digest. Headline story, of course, the 120th Kentucky Derby. Here now are the conditions of racing. America's most famous thoroughbred race, grade one, $878,800 in the gross purse. It's three-year-olds all carrying 126 pounds, a mile and a quarter, on a track listed as sloppy. Here's the field now. The rails sold the matter at 16, Valiant Nature at 12, Powers Castle at 20. Then the race favorite, Holy Bull, with Mike Smith riding at 2-1. to one. Strode's Creek from Charlie Whittingham's barn at 7 with Delahousse. Go for Jen at 9 to 1 with Hall of Famer Chris McCarran. Tabasco Captain Dwayne Lucas Stable 6 to 1 with Pat Day. Brocco 4 to 1 with Gary Stevens, the West Coast star. Southern Rhythm at 20, young Garrett Gomez, his first derby ride. Lumen Affair at 14 to 1 from Jack Van Berg's barn. Jerry Bailey picking up that mount. Scratch Ken Daly earlier in the afternoon because of the off track. And Ulysses, one of the field horses at 16, also in the field. Mahogany Hall, Smiling Singing Sam, and Meadow Flight. Now from ABC Sports Telecast, here's Dave Johnson and the 120th Kentucky Derby. Now we're ready, and they're up. And Ulysses from between horses goes for the early lead. Go for Jen is right up there. And Holy Bull toward the inside of the gray horse is behind a wall of four horses as they pass us for the first time. Go for Jen on the outside leads it. From between horses, Ulysses. Powers Castle on the inside, right there, third. Valiant Nature is fourth. On the outside, Tabasco Cat is fifth. Then Holy Bull, sixth at this point. Between horses, three off the lead. Strode's Creek is in seventh position. On the outside, that's a meadow fight in the white cap at the rail. Rocco is moving up, and I believe Valiant Nature had a problem there around that turn. Then comes Bloomin' Affair. Soul of the matter on the inside, smiling, singing Sam. And on the outside, uh, Meadow Flight is dropping back a bit. And then two, the last two horses, Southern Rhythm, and at the back of the pack, Mahogany Hall. The half in 47 and one-fifth seconds, but not on the front end of Holy Bull. He's three off of it. The leader is Go for Jim. In front with Chris McCarran by a length and a quarter. Ulysses second, Powers Castle on the out outside third, and there goes Smiling, Singing Sam, rushing up on the outside from fourth to second quickly. Around the far turn, Gopher Jin leads it. Smiling, Singing Sam, Powers Castle between horses. Tabasco Cat with the white blinkers, fourth. Holy Bull on the inside is still fifth, and Brocco is beginning to close ground out in the middle of the racetrack. Brocco is flying along with Strode's Creek. Blumen Affair is next. And on the inside, Holy Bull is dropping back. Holy Bull is out of it. He's about ninth at this point. Now they're in the stretch. Go for Jim, who's lit from the start, has the lead. He's throwing off by two with McCarran. On the inside, Rocco is second. Here comes Strode's Creek in the middle of the racetrack. And down the stretch they come. It's Go for Jim digging in and holding on. He is going to win the Kentucky Derby. Where? Lightning strikes again for owners Bill Cotter and Joe Carnaccia and trainer Nick Zito as their Gopher Gen wins the Derby. Three years after they were in the winner's circle with Strike the Goal. Gopher Gen ridden by Chris McCarran. He's a Kentucky bred Gopher Gen, his son of Comorant, who stands in New York. Out of the stage door, Johnny Mayer never knocked. Well, here is the full order of finish now. For the 120th Kentucky Derby, you know the top three. Rocco, courageous run to get fourth. Soul of the matter fifth, Tabasco Cat. Dwayne Lucas is sixth. Southern Rhythm, Powers Castle, caused some of the problems that first turn. You saw Mahogany Hall ninth. Smiling, singing Sam for the Dogwood Stable, tenth. Meadow Flight, there's the big story. Holy Bull, twelfth. Then Valiant Nature, who also had problems that first turn. And Ulysses. Well, let's start our Derby post-race report now with owners Bill Condon and Joe Carnaccia. They were part owners with Giles Brophy, you remember, the 1991 Derby winner, strike the goal. And now they are two for two in the Derby. It gets sweeter all the time. Joe, your thoughts? 
Well, I'd have to echo that. It, uh, I didn't realize how difficult it was. I did this time, and it's much more exciting for me. Now, clarify the naming of this horse. People think Gopher Gin might have some alcoholic reference. Not true. No, not at all. We're gin rummy players. <laughs> and the mother is never knock. And every gin rummy player knows if you don't knock, you go for gin. And Gopher Gin really went for it on Saturday. He truly was a horse for the sloppy course. A three-year-old who has raced ten times on six off-tracks and never been worse than second. Winning rider Chris McCarran was as surprised as everyone else, though. He found himself on the lead with Gopher Gin, who is riding for the first time. I didn't expect to be in front from the word go, but Nick wanted me close to pressure Holy Bull. And um, I, for some reason, I was in front when I passed the wire the first time. And uh, I gave a peek back here to see if anybody was ru running very prominently. And when I didn't uh, see anybody coming strong, I was really confident because I had a lot of horse left. I didn't really move on him until I straightened out for home. And I, when I asked him to change leads, he did right here. I gave him a little tap on the shoulder, and he exploded. We asked the Hall of Famer, who won his second Kentucky Derby, how he picked up this mount so late. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just lucky. I, I was very lucky. Jerry Bailey was riding two good colts in New York and uh, had to ride one of them, and uh, somebody had to ride the other, and I was lucky that Nick selected me. Nick, of course, is 46-year-old trainer Nick Zito, who wins his second derby in just three tries. He told us why Gopher Jen won it. Well, I think uh, one of the factors was, uh, as I always say, as corny as it may be, the good Lord smiled down on me and made it rain today. And, you know, this horse loves the mud, and uh, he got out in front, and the rest was history. Look ahead with us now. Well, you know, we got to go to the Preakness, obviously, and uh, hopefully we'll try to do well. You know, again, I said it three years ago, we, we won't change strategy, we won't do anything fancy, we'll, we'll try to get the second jewel, and... Hopefully, when we go back to New York, everything will work out okay. Nothing worked out okay for Holy Bull, the 15th consecutive favorite to lose in the Derby. His rider Mike Smith explained what happened to the big gray colt owned and trained by Jimmy Kroll. We got away a little flat-footed. Well, Ulysses kind of broke in uh, and then kind of wiped us out leaving there. But e even after that, I thought I would be okay. Uh, uh, so I lost that part of the, of the battle, but I thought that my horse went ahead and relaxed well. And then we go into the first turn, and, and when, the, when the three horse... Uh, You'll see here when we start heading into the first turn. I, I feel all right here. My horse is kind of taking it well. Value Nature's right next to me. We're fine. Now you see the horse on the rail. He'll kind of ease out here. When he wheels out, he knocks Value Nature out of there and knocks him over my heels right here. And when that drug him down in behind, he, he cut his back leg pretty bad. And after that, he just never was in the race. Well, now let's look at the probable list of starters for the Preakness. Second jewel of the Triple Crown, May 21st in Baltimore. As you look down that list, you might note some names that aren't there. It looks like Valiant Nature's Soul of the Matter will not go. There is a question mark, we understand, about Bracco, Silver Goblin, Polar Expedition, Rustic Light, Howell's Castle, and numerous concern looming some of the new ones expected to contest the Preakness Stakes. Well, the Daily Racing Forum's popular National Fantasy Stables contest continues. In the week before the Derby, our stable had no earnings. Oh, well. But a computer specialist from the University of California at Berkeley, Vincent Pescatelli, earned the $500 weekly prize. His stable earned more than $609,000. We'll have our Derby Week results next week. Here are our trades, though, for week number six of the Fantasy Stables Contest. Horses we add uh, and horses we've dropped there. We'll be back with a lot more racing straight ahead on the Digest. The Daily Racing Forum Racehorse Digest is brought to you by America's Turf Authority, The Daily Racing Forum, by the United Thoroughbred Trainers of America, publishers of the Backstretch Magazine, by Brookside Farms, the American Quarter Horse Association, serving the American Quarter Horse racing industry and America's horse, by the Breeders' Cup Racing's year-round national stakes program, and by the Four Sixes, Horses with a history, friends with a background. Back on the Digest, you know, with all the attention paid to the Kentucky Derby, you might have thought it was the only thoroughbred race run over the past weekend. Well, not so. We have a number of top stakes to show you now, starting with Friday's eighth race at Churchill Downs, the Early Times Turf Classic. Started the Early Times Triple Turf Series. Now back to defend last year's Turf Classic title at Churchill was the two-time Breeders' Cup champion lure in the Claiborne Orange Silks. The son of Danzig also looking to grab the first race to stay alive in the series with a bonus of $1 million that just eluded him last year.
rounding the far turn. The name Jimmy is trying to go wire to wire here. Yukon Robbie, Lure has had nowhere to run yet, and he's down toward the inside. There's a narrow opening for Lure. Paradise Creek is coming on the outside, and Mike Smith sends Lure to the lead from the hedge. It's Lure in front now by a neck, but Paradise Creek trying to pull an upset up, and he's got the lead with the furlong to run, and Paradise Creek is blowing by Lure, and Lure will not repeat today. It is going to be Paradise Creek, and he's going to be a runaway winner. He wins by five expanding lengths. Paradise Creek KOs the one to five odds on choice lure who according to jockey Mike Smith had trouble with the wet slippery turf and was unable to run to form. No matter to Paradise Creek who cruised home to a four length victory under Pat Day for trainer Billy Mott and owner Masayuki Nishiyama. Paradise Creek Racing's newest millionaire wins his fourth in a row this year. He's by Irish River out of the Northfield Mare north of Eden. Here he is in the winner's circle of the early times. While that race is one of the week's major events, the Friday before the Derby is known as Kentucky Oaks Day. The Kentucky Derby for the three-year-old Phillies. The two heavyweights in this year's 120th running of this mile and an eighth race, Breeders' Cup juvenile Philly runner-up Sardula and the undefeated Lakeway. They're rounding the far turn. They've run three quarters and one, 11 and four. Lakeway with a powerful run to the lead on the outside. And here comes Lakeway sweeping past the weakening front runners. Sardula's coming through on the inside. And the confrontation at the top of the stretch. And Diane's halo is moving into contention. Coming down toward the final furlong. Sardula, Lakeway, head to head as they charge headlong into the last furlong. Diane's halo is third. Sardula digging down deep. Lakeway is tenacious on the outside. Sardula, Lakeway in a battle of will to the wire. Here's the finish. It looks like Sardula gets it by a desperate head. Another odds-on favorite beaten at Churchill Downs is Lakeway. Falls to 7-5 to five, Sardula and her jockey Hall of Famer Eddie Delahousse. That puts an end to the undefeated Lakeway's four-race winning streak. Sardula, a $110,000 Keeneland purchase, is making only her second start since losing last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile in a photo. She's trained by Brian Maybury for owners Mr. and Mrs. Jerry Moss. One who might have made a difference in that Oaks was the Ashland Stakes winner Inside Information. But trainer Shug McGahey and owner Ogden Mills Phipps opted instead to go for the New York Philly Triple Tierra, which began with Sunday's $150,000 mile acorn stakes. As you can see, neither the field nor the muddy track presented any problem for this brilliant private account Philly, never tested, still prevailed by 11 widening lengths under Mike Smith. The one the two favorite covered the mile in an impressive 134 and one that equaled the stakes record despite the off track. Following her home, the Irish bred Cinnamon Sugar, followed by Heatherwood Farms, Sovereign Kitty. Well, Saturday's ninth at Aqueduct in New York, the $150,000 Carter Handicap. It's for three-year-olds and up going seven furlongs. Some names in here you'll recognize, no doubt, including Ibero, Virginia Rapids, and the eight to five favorite, Cherokee Run. Here's the Carter. Storm Tower on the inside, Cherokee Run on the outside. Those two are heads apart, and Virginia Rapids is gaining ground on the outside. It's those three across the track now, and Virginia Rapids gets to the lead. It's Virginia Rapids on the inside is Cherokee Run. Here's a late move from Punchline. They're coming for the line, and Virginia Rapids will win the Carter Handicap by a length. Virginia Rapids makes it two in a row, winning the Carter here by a length and a quarter under jockey Jean-Luc Semin in a sizzling 121 and two. The Middletown stable runner who went off at five to one is a four-year-old son of Riverman out of the Sir Ivor Mayor, Virginiana. According to his trainer, Hall of Famer Alan Jerkins, Virginia Rapids will start next in the half-million-dollar Metropolitan Mile at Belmont on Memorial Day. Trainer Jerkins also had a victory in last Wednesday's vagrancy. Here are the results with Sky Beauty making the first start of 94 a winning one. Coming home three lengths in fun under Mike Smith as the 2-5 to five favorite. Jerkins hasn't decided where she'll run next. Well, the second richest event of the weekend next to the Kentucky Derby was in Illinois. Part of the closing day festivities at Sportsman's Park. The $300,000 60 sales handicap for Phillies and Mares going a mile and an eighth on a sloppy track. The winner here, Princess Polonia, under jockey Wigberto Ramos. He took over at the stretch and came home three quarters of a length here in front of John Frank's Eskimo Angel on the outside. The Harvey Veneer trainee is a four-year-old daughter of Danzig, bred in Kentucky by her owner, Louis Etkin. Her winner's share of the $300,000 purse, $180,000. It's time now for our Breeders' Cup Horse of the Week, the Breeders' Cup Premium or Special Stakes Race. We head west to Hollywood Park, the Grade 3 Senorita Breeders' Cup on April 30th. On the lead, the three-year-old filly 
Rabiadella, owned by Stonehenge Stables, trained by Mike Orman. Bred in Florida by Richard Pearden, the daughter of Dinah Palmer, out of the Dr. Fagermare Crystal Goddess, is being ridden by Hall of Famer, Lafitte Ping Tai Jr. They built a huge 15-length lead halfway through this mile race on the turf, and as you see, galloped home. Her first stakes win, 134-3, at odds of 7-1. Rebbe Adela earned a first place check of $60,800, including almost $14,000 in Breeders' Cup funds as she's nominated to the Breeders' Cup program. Here are a couple events coming up in the Breeders' Cup, a premium and a special stake race. Let's turn to harness racing now and to give us a review of this past week's top stakes for the Trotters and the Pacers, let's join Dave Johnson. What a difference a year makes in horse racing. The big favorite heading into the 1993 Graduate Series Final was the early season sensation Staying Together, who would win that race and go on to capture 93 Harness Horse of the Year honors. This year, Staying Together has had his problems. In fact, he failed to even qualify for Saturday night's Graduate Final at the Meadowlands. The favorite in the race? Well, this season's early sensation arrive at five who went up against nine rivals, including stablemates Under Orders, Silent Spring, Silver Almahurst, and Lotta Soul. And it's Under Orders by three points of a length. Driving uncovered on the outside is Arrive at five. Broadway Jade in third. The outside it's Silver Almahurst fourth. Captain Fantastic fifth. And Silent Spring. They approach three quarters. And it's Arrive at five now on even terms with Under Orders. Three quarters and one, 24 and one. Three sixteenths to go and they're on their way home. And it's arrive at five, taking over the lead by a length and a half. Under orders is second. Over the four outside, silent spring and a late move from Courteous Mark. But he does it again, arrive at five. Tons the best in here. We'll win the graduate final seven in a row now for arrive at five in one fifty-two and four. In 1978, a 31-year-old Canadian trainer named Bill Robinson won the very first graduate with his very first stakes horse, Dream Maker. Eighteen years later, Robinson is victorious again, this time with a Rive at Five, who wins for the 15th time in 18 starts. Rosecroft Raceway held two eliminations for next Saturday night's Will Give Me Miller Memorial Pace for three-year-olds. In the first heat, Falcon's Future and driver Chip Noble held off the charge of Pacific Rocket to win in the time of 152 and three-fifths over a sloppy track. With John Campbell driving a ride at five in the graduate final, Ron Waples took the reins of the unbeaten Cam's Card Shark in the second elimination. And the Barry's Creek winner prevailed, beating Tuffeting Millbank in 154 and three-fifths. The Miller Memorial boasts an excellent field. Falcon's future returned to his winning form with the fastest mile of the season at Rosecroft. Breeders' Crown Champ Expensive Scooter and Armbro McIntosh were both making their season's debuts and needed the starts. But the favorite should be Cam's Card Shark, who will be looking for his fifth straight victory. This Saturday afternoon, Freehold Raceway will hold the prestigious Dexter Cup. And last Friday, 13 three-year-old trotters raced over a wet track in two elimination heats. The first was won by Bullville Victory. Two and a quarter lengths to the good over Keystone Graham and Call Upon. But it was the second elimination that attracted most of the attention as the highly regarded Incredible Abe, making his season's debut, beat two other top-rated trotters in Mr. Levesque and Bosphorus. The winning time was 1.59 and a fifth. American winner had his coming out party last year in the Dexter Cup. And the next Hambletonian champion just might come from this group of early starters. Incredible Abe, Mr. Levesque, and Bosphorus. Combined to win 25 of 41 starts last year for earnings of nearly $900,000. Chicago's Maywood Park closed out its meeting on Saturday night with the $75,000 Cinderella Pace for three-year-old fillies. And it was the 8-5 to five favorite, Go Jamie Go, and driver Dave McGee taking the glass slipper, beating Lotus Fur by a length and a half. The time, 156 and 3 fifths. The American Quarter Horse Sprinters are ready to race for you now as we head to Blue Ribbon Downs in Salisaw, Oklahoma. The Grade 1, 350-yard Oklahoma Futurity and the Grade 3 Oklahoma Derby. Favorite here in this $150,000 stake that had three scratches is Tom Chapman, Shawnee Easy Bug. He'll break from the 8-hole under jockey J.R. Harvey. Again to Salisaw. And 
They're off in the grade one Oklahoma Futurity. Optimizer came away sharp, sir. Seventh heaven. A special knack is getting after it. Then comes my haltered ego from the outside. Shawnee's easy bug. Shawnee's easy bug surging on the outside. And to the inside, Optimizer, Optimizer. And Shawnee's easy bug, these two, noses apart. Here's another look at that Oklahoma Futurity. The fastest qualifier, Shawnee's Easy Bug, gets a clean break. While well, the horse he would eventually photo with, number three, Optimizer, got a bump that really didn't seem to hold him back too much. Now, both horses going down the strip here with Shawnee's Easy Bug coming on the outside. He'll get to Optimizer at the wire and just get up here by a neck. Shawnee's Easy Bug is an Oklahoma bred son of Easy Leela out of Shawnee's Moon Buck. The Oklahoma Futurity, only the second start of this Luis Franco trainee's career, it earned him over $60,000. Well, preceding that Futurity, the 31st running of the Grade 2 $104,000 Oklahoma Derby at 400 yards. Fastest qualifier here, Bullet Bullion, who has installed off that effort as the 1-2 favorite. And they're off. Michael Sis is heading right to the front. Rocketta, Shawnee Bug is second. Rock and Rona in the center of the track. And on the outside, Cameo Carrier midway to the stretch. It's Rock and Rona in command. Cameo Carrier to the center of the track. It's Rock and Rona. Watch now as Bullet Bullion, the favorite, gets left at the start in the Oklahoma Derby. On the 16 to 1 long shot, Rock and Rona roars out of the gate. Now we'll start to head for the outside rail before jockey Randy Wilson straightens him out. We'll get him on track and he'll go on to a one-length victory here over Zevi's Extra Vance. The odds-on favorite, Bullet Bullion, who came back from his disappointing start, got the show spot. There are the prices with Rock and Rona, son of champion Ronas Ryan, paying $34.60 for a winning $2 bet. $2 Quinella, by the way, returned $183.80. Rock and Rona, trained by Jack Wilson, the Canadian owner, Janice Sather.